Okay, this video is a little late, but let's make a 3D printed speedboat. You need to print your speedboat. So what I did is I printed mine on the LawsBot Taz 6 with the Morse Struder. The Morse Struder is great because it gives a very quick print speed and the layer adhesion is amazing. Now, assuming you don't have a LawsBot Taz 6 with the Morse Struder, you can get away with the Perza i3. All the parts are made to be able to be printed with that printer. Probably not anything smaller than that print bed though. You'll be able to get away with printing this on high speed and the worst quality possible because the quality really doesn't matter unless you want to go for a super smooth finish right off the bat. The finished product can be sanded or smoothed if it's ABS and you can always use Bondo or just paint to fill everything in. Now, once everything's printed, you're gonna have a few parts. One reason I actually do not mind the very rough surface of the Lawsbot Morse Struder is because it actually lets everything kind of click together. I'm not even pushed this in all the way and it's kind of hard to take apart. So, I used PLA. If you use ABS, you can use any ABS weld techniques, but I'm too lazy to print well in ABS, so I just go to PLA for everything. Let's get some adhesive. Today, I am gonna be using 30 minute epoxy from BSI. Now, any epoxy longer than about five minutes should work. You could use 15, 30, an hour, whatever. But I would steer away from using five minute epoxy because it will not have the strength required. So, I'm hoping you know how to use epoxy. And if you don't, read the instructions because it all might be different. But this BSI stuff is just one to one. So follow the instructions for your epoxy. Probably made a little too much here, but that's okay. Maybe. And what you're gonna do is mix your epoxy very well. Surprising, I know. And definitely don't skip out on this step. Make sure everything's mixed evenly and you're not rushing it. Because the last thing you'd want to happen is have your boat fall in half while you're out on a lake. So, once your epoxy is mixed, you're going to take one of the pieces and just smear it along the, uh, what are we going to call this, a tab? Now my surface is rough enough that I am not going to spread any on the mating surface, but depending on your print quality, you might want to just smear some on the inside of the mating surface too. And then, just push that together. And clear the excess epoxy off. If you want to sand your parts right off the printer, that's fine. Just make sure you leave the tabs rough because again, that actually will help with the bond between the two. Unless it's ABS, then do whatever you want. And just use regular ABS mating techniques. Okay, here's this. I'm gonna clean it off with a paper towel. And that looks awful, but that's okay. Now, before my epoxy's dry, I'm going to do this second tab. Again, the glue doesn't matter too much, but I would steer away from 5 minute epoxy because the strength will not be there. Again, once you've covered the tab and maybe the mating surface, line up the other piece and stick them together. Get rid of all the extra epoxy. Now, I haven't had this problem before, but there's a little bit of gap between the two surfaces. 
I'm just going to get this tiny little clamp and make sure that they're stuck together. And the other side has a little bit of separation. I might as well do that as well. A tiny little clamp or chip put would probably do wonders. But you work with what you got. This isn't really that important, but with the amount of separation I was getting, I want that hatch to fit very well in here, so might as well do it. Oh, I was actually able to press that top piece on just a little further because those layers are so tight that it wasn't quite all the way down. And with this 30 minute epoxy, I'm just going to put this aside for a few hours and come back to it. So while you have some wet epoxy, what you might want to do is look for some little imperfections and holes. And if you have any of those, fill them in with the epoxy. This canopy came out really rough for me. So what I'm going to do is use the epoxy to fill in some of these holes. Bondo would probably work a little better, but you work with what you got. And right now I have a lot of leftover epoxy. The right thing to do would probably have been reprint this with another layer, but I think I've delayed the video long enough. <laughs> and we'll leave that to dry. While that's drying, I'm going to start installing some motors onto the back plate. So I used just some old 250 frame size motors from a quadcopter. They're cheap and available. I already started gutting this apart. This quad actually had some desyncing uh, issues that I'm too lazy to figure out. So I'll just put new hardware in it and use this stuff for a boat. There we go. Two motors and two ESCs. These guys look okay. Now it's important to make sure that your Motor screws do not go into your motor windings. Like in all builds, that will make you pretty sad pretty quickly. There's probably some support material in here you'll have to break away. On the more Struder, I don't get the greatest quality. So I'm just going to clean out these screw holes and make sure I can fit a bolt through them. Okay, now the motor is going to go on this part that's uh, raised, and then the screws drop into the recess. I like to keep the motor wires up and towards the middle. If you take these little retainer clips off, it's going to make it a whole lot easier to take off the bell housing and clean your motors after each run. There we go. That way, when you're done running, you just pop off the bell housing and spray it with Corrosion X or something similar. Distilled water at the very least. Okay, and what you're going to do is run two to four screws into each motor. Now the motors are in, I'm going to wait for the boat to finish drying before I go to the next step. Now for the fun part, electronics. You'll need two ESCs. Now I just use mini quad ESCs because they're cheap and readily available. While they don't have reverse, I tend to not really need it when I'm using the RC boats. You could use a boat or car ESC with reverse. But it costs a little more, and even though we're going to waterproof them, there's a chance that these will get fried during normal use. So I just like to stick with something cheap and disposable. Normally I'd let the leads go straight into the XT60, but since these were from a quad and cut short, I'm going to have to solder some extensions into the uh, XT60. Next we're going to waterproof these ESCs. There's two ways to do it. You could completely cut off the heat shrink and just coat the board in epoxy. Or you could fill both ends with epoxy and do it that way. Now I've already sprayed these down with some Corrosion X. So the epoxy might not stick too well but I'm going to just try and fill up the holes and hopefully that will do well. I'd probably use some 15 minute epoxy if I had it but all I can find is some 30 minute which is plenty good enough for what we need. And this two part epoxy is perfect for what we're doing because it will be waterproof and also have a little bit of flexibility for the cables moving around. 
I'm just trying to get the epoxy between the cables and all the way into the ESC. And then you are going to want to do both ends. If your epoxy is very runny, you might need to do one end at a time so it doesn't flow off. I think I'm going to get away with doing them both together. Just make sure you wiggle the wire so that it gets all in there and you don't leave anything open. Okay, now that everything's set up and dry, it's a great time to do body work if you want to do that for your final product. What you can do is lightly sand the body of the boat. For PLA, what we do is we apply a body filler and then sand that nice and smooth before putting on a coat of primer and the finished top coat. Once you have everything painted and finished how you want it, we can install the back plate. I use these uh, what number eight by half inch screws they seem to work really good for this and all you have to do is line the holes up and it should go right in so for the hatch originally we planned to use electrical tape to get a good seal and that would be the only thing holding the hatch on but we found it doesn't quite stick to the PLA too good if you have a nice paint job that's smooth uh, electrical tape should seal this up nice and uh, tight and keep it waterproof if not, what I did is I glued a little piece of wood to the underside here and then I just ran drywall screws in and that's what holds the hatch on. So every time you take the hatch on and off it's just two quick screws, one in front, one in back. Now as far as running the ESCs into the boat, I like to put the holes on top here and run the ESC wires through and then either solder them directly to the motor or if you have bullets, you can put them inside. Bullets are a little finicky. I do like soldering them. We found these props were the best. What you do is you trim them down so that they don't rub. And then the motor direction is very important here. The motors have to spin inward. Well, I guess not inward. The motors have to spin in this direction. I'll put a diagram on the screen. So if you apply thrust to this one, it should push the boat right. But if it's spinning the wrong direction and your prop is wrong, it's actually going to be paddling the boat to the left. So it will be pushing right and paddling left, where you'll get no turning authority at low speeds. It will try and go opposite, but then at high speeds it will do really wonky things. So this is very important to have the left motor spinning counterclockwise and the right motor clockwise. That will keep everything pushing, paddling in the same direction and you're not fighting yourself. Also we liked adding these vertical stabilizers. I just used aluminum. Peter had a bent rudder post you can see in his video. One last thing you can do is add some waterproof styrofoam to the inside of the boat. This is from Loctite. It's not great stuff. Great stuff will soak up water and become heavy. This stuff is actually closed cell. So it won't soak up any water and if my boat were to flip over, it's not going to sink because I have this foam in here. And one last thing, if you're having any problems getting the V-tail mix to work right, I'm going to link a very good video that explains that in the description. If you want to see a video that's more in depth about waterproofing ESCs, I'll put a link in the description and that will be there for you to check out. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys have fun building your boat. And I should have another project out very soon. Riven, subscribe. Oh, yeah. Good boy.